All right, guys, what's up? Don McLeod here again, as always. Uh, I just wanted to go over quickly for those of us that need a little bit of a tutorial in terms of Microsoft Word and understanding how to set it up and everything like that um, when creating things. So if you don't need that, this isn't for you. You already know what you're doing. Good job. If you don't, there's nothing wrong with that. We're just going to go through it and at least teach you some of the basic fundamentals so that we can put something together. Uh, so again, this is the actual document you're going to be doing it on. It's called the PPP Campaign Mailer. Uh, you'll save it as and submit it back in Google Classroom. But you'll notice I have two different ones, so it's for front and back. And all this is for your references, this is I just created a shape and put it in there. Because uh, what we do when we're creating stuff like this is we got to use objects, text, things like that. We don't use general format. Uh, so all I did is I put a shape here. Uh, so first off, I'll teach how we would insert a picture. Now I'm going to show you the incorrect way first, and then I'll show you the easier way that actually makes it good in terms of adjusting things around. Regardless, though, you're going to go to Pictures, there, under Insert, and you're going to have a bunch of stuff that comes up here. So go to the one that you want. I'm going to use this dapping picture of myself, and I'm going to put it in. But our problem now is I want to be able to move this around, right? But I can't. So the problem with Microsoft Word, unlike some Photoshop elements and things like that on different uh, computers that you use, is it's stuck where it's at. So you can't move it around. That's the only problem with it. So you can probably go, uh, you can go on this side if you wanted to, and you could tap it. You could do that if you want. You could probably even do this or that if you would like. My thing with this, so when we're creating mailers, we want to move things around all the time. We want to be able to do that freehand. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep that there. I'm going to show us, though, we're still going to use the picture. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Insert, and I'm going to come up to Text Box. I'm going to click Simple Text Box, and I'm going to open it up like this. So then what I'll do here is I'll just delete. It's still there. I'm going to keep my cursor blinking inside the text box, and I'm going to go back and do the same thing again. Insert Picture, grab my picture and put it in. Now you notice it goes inside the text box. So they're the same picture, the only difference is here is I can move this wherever I feel like now because it's part of the text box. So that's what we want to do when we're trying to move these things around to make it fit better and make it look more aesthetically pleasing in terms of the creativity department. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on that, delete it there, and I'm going to use this as my picture because I want to be able to move this around and I want to be able to put it in how I feel like eventually. Um, so the real question, first off, a lot of people ask is, well, how do I make it bigger? Well, first you have to make your text box as big as you want it to. That's the main thing. So then I'll go there, I'll click back on the picture, and I'll drag it as much as I would like to. My recommendation is try to make the text box as close to the picture, if not overlaying it as possible, because if later you'll see when text box overlay each other, they tend to cancel each other out. Uh, so then, good, we're done. I have my picture in. However, it looks a little, eh, it looks weird with the boundary, doesn't it? Yes, it does, absolutely. That's what you're saying. So what I'm going to do is, you see my cursor here? I'm like that. I need to put it over the text box, not the picture, but I need to put it over the text box right there to make the crosshair. So I'm going to right-click that one. I'm going to go down to Format Shape. And over here, you'll see Line. I'm going to click No Line. It doesn't show Line anymore. I'm also going to go over here to Fill, and I'm going to click No Fill. So now it's not even white, it's just transparent. So you see? There we go. i got no border, i got no anything in it, so we're good. The only problem is now when I want to move it, i got to be very careful. I'm not moving the picture. i got to do the text box itself. You can see if I move that, it doesn't do it. So i got to go back. i got to make sure I identify the text box itself. Sometimes it's a little more challenging to do, which is why I always recommend people keeping it the boundary or the border if you will the dark border until you are in the final product and then you want to take it away but we're good now so now my picture's in awesome cool um so cool let's start typing all right i can get going on that no i don't want to do that because the same problem is like i ran into before is it's like a normal document inside the text box or inside the shape i want to be able to move things around how i feel like so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to insert i'm going to go into text box again and i'm going to click a text box Awesome. So now I can come over here and I can start putting things in if I want to. And again, we double click, make our life easier. Start typing. Look at me, I'm amazing at how fast I type. Cool, that's great. Um, that's future code for anyone that wants to know. 
Actually, I have no clue what that is. Uh, so I'm going to go back to home. We'll make bullet points. Cool, bullet points are in. Now I can start building things around it here. So I'm going to click on the text box. I'll shorten it up if I like. I can even add color so I don't have to make it so boring. So I would go click right click. And I'll do fill. Let's say I'm going to do red there. Outline, always a good idea to match it up unless you want it to have a defined boundary. Then you can go black. I just like making it look cool. And then here again, if I want to change the text, the font itself, I can highlight. I can go back and I can change into different ones. Sorry, make sure it clicks. And then I can go over here, click a different text. Uh, remember when you're building mailers, font is really, really important because certain fonts say different things to different people. Like the font I picked right here is Arial Black. And Arial Black is known as a pretty intense font. It says different things than a nicer looking font, a little more subtle, um, like Bookman Old Style down here. That looks a little nicer. Uh, Lucidia Handwriting says different things. So just be careful what type of text you use in that one. Uh, so that does a text box. So again, if I were to click on this text box, I can move this text box wherever I want. I can put it on top of that one. And I can move it around. That's the main thing is that it's free. It's no longer attached to the shape itself. Uh, so let's put it down. I always like kind of overlaying things. It, it makes it, it's a nice creative element that makes it look more high end if you overlay things. Uh, so let's put a title. I want to put my name, right? Because I'm running for 44th district here. So I can use word art. So I just go back to insert. I can do word art there and I can do that. And it'll show up as, it's a text box. It's just a specific word art. Uh, so I can do McLeod there and I could make it bigger if I'd like. You can always right click or you can go back to something else. So I'm going to make it big. I could do that there. I can put it over which is pretty cool there. Main thing though for this project is we got to make sure everything is within these boundaries, the four corners of the boxes because although your boxes can go outside of it, the way I format it is I'm only going to print the stuff that is on the inside of this one so it makes it easier uh, in that one. Someone asked me, how do I make the background? If I want to make the background a single color, I want to make it something else. Uh, since I started as a shape, I would click on it, highlight it. I'm going to right click, and then I could go back into fill here, and I'll make it a color like that. Um, again, I would the outline, I would always make it the same color if possible. If not, keep it black. It's fine, but you see how I changed that immediately uh, in there, which is, I like it. I think it's cool. Uh, we got some more options here. So, yeah, you could do... Uh, you could do a pattern fill, you could do gradient fill, solid fills, you can change things, pattern fills, you can make it look cool like that if you wanted to. A um, whole bunch of different elements. You play around and you do what you want to. There's no specific requirement, but you got to make it look good. That's the main thing. So we'll go back to solid fill, click blue. So I got the whole blood, uh, excuse me, blue, red, purple, because I love purple. Again, I can always change my font to change the content. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do this rather quickly and I probably shouldn't. Uh, you'll notice in your font it only goes up to 72 but you can make it as big as you want. So my recommendation would be start playing around with it. So I know 72 I'm going to go 144 and that should make it bigger there. So you're not subject to just what the drop down box tells you in terms of the font here because you're only guaranteed 72 but you can put in whatever you want and make it work on that. Uh, so we'll click out of that. So that would be start on the front side, and then I can go do the same thing on the back side. But again, because I formatted my picture incorrectly the first time, got to make sure it's there. So we'll go back here and do that. You shouldn't have to do this from the start because I already did it for you, so you won't need to do that. Uh, so you'll come back down here, and there you go. You're good. You can do that. And so that is... That, I think I explained it all what you would need. Uh, my recommendation is, I've done this, I've learned this the hard way uh, when I was completing my master's in England. I lost a lot of very important papers because I did not click save properly and Microsoft Word sometimes does not auto save correctly. So I would click save to make sure every time you're good whenever you make a few changes. Click save, save your life, you've done the hard work. I think you should keep it nice and well. Uh, so this is the tutorial on this. If you need any help, anything, you're more than welcome. Uh, to ask me. I'm pretty good at this. I do this. I did this a lot of my first career, so I enjoy doing this. But remember, this is your project. It's your creativity. I just want to make sure you have all the necessary tools that you need to do it. Um, more pictures, the merrier. And again, if you run into problems, please, please, please do ask. All right, let's do this and let's make it good.